as I'm sure you guys have heard that an arrest was made in connection with the quadruple slaying of four college students in Moscow, Idaho. Now, this story captured national attention for good reason. You know, when you have people, period, but, you know, America, we tend to sympathize more with with younger people when they are murdered. Um, And that's science, by the way. There was, I think it was the Columbia School of Journalism or the Columbia Journalism Review did a media like sympathy rating system. And they found that the people that receive the most sympathetic coverage and the most coverage when either they go missing or murdered usually are, are younger and white and usually female. Um, and that was the gender demographic of, I believe the at least half or maybe three out of four of the victims there in Moscow, Idaho, and they captured somebody and then somebody has already been placed under arrest. And we heard a lot about that for several weeks, but what you did not hear a lot about was the stabbing death of a 19 year old student at the University of Buffalo at Amherst in New York state. And his name was Tyler Lewis. Now Tyler was a young, young black man. And it's not unknown to police who attacked and stabbed Tyler and uh, inevitably took his life. Um, But there has not been an arrest yet made. And chances are you have not yet heard about this story. Um, And I believe, do we have Tyler's mother? Is she, is she joining us? Is she standing by? Hi. Hi, Miss Lewis. Um, We're joined today with Rokishia Lewis. She is Tyler's mother. And uh, Miss Lewis, first of all, I wanted to extend my deepest condolences uh, to you and your family. When I first became aware of the story, I mean, obviously just so sad that uh, such, such a promising young man um, was taken in this way. But the lack of responsiveness from the police um, and the lack of attention, I would say, comparatively speaking, when we talk about what happened with the students murdered in Idaho, uh, your son's case has not received a, a, a reciprocal amount of media attention. So um, for, I wanted to, to start off by if you could bring us up to speed, at least about what authorities have shared with you pertaining to the night back in October of 2022, uh, when when Tyler was found stabbed on his college campus. Little to nothing. Um, They just, uh, they stated that the friends that Tyler, that brought Tyler to the um, parking lot that drove him there, um, all lured up, and they weren't able to speak to them. That's all the information that I received. And the DA did have a press, uh, not a press conference, but a um, Zoom. a Zoom meeting with me and the rest of my family, and advised that there may not be any arrest. Have they categorized Tyler's? Death H- has it been ruled a homicide? It, it, it what, what determination was made? I guess officially from either the medical examiner or the coroner. Definitely in homicide. Yes, Tyler was stabbed. Yes. So I'm I'm confused as to how the district attorney can can say to you that there will be no arrest in this homicide because people uh, got lawyers. Like that that doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't. A lot of um, things don't make sense. The fact that this um, murder was is it's handled by the campus police doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, the University of Buffalo. This whole the investigation is on the campus. Everything is on at the University of Buffalo. There's no FBI investigation like um, the Idaho um, murder murders. Um, you know, everything's tight lipped. They, they're not corresponding with me. And like you said, you really, not a lot of people have heard of this story at all. All I know that it is a white male, five foot five to five foot nine, that is out there. And their college campus is not safe. But yet, they made a statement, um, the University of Buffalo made a statement almost immediately saying that their campus is safe. Tyler didn't know who this was. I, I, I can 
I, I can tell you that 1,000% that Tyler did not know. Tyler was loved by everyone. Miss Lewis, have any of Tyler's friends or, you know, I, I mean, we, we know how young people talk. We know how social media can can spread information, sometimes factual, sometimes inaccurate. Ha, what What is the chatter? What I, I hate to put it this way, I mean, but what, what are the streets saying? What, what are Tyler's friends or people who may have been associated with him or who may have knowledge about what happened that night? Have people been coming to you and, and telling you things outside of what law enforcement is saying? That he was set up is that it's similar to the, um, the case in Mexico of the young lady that was um, murdered. murdered um, Shanquilla. Yeah, it was very similar stories, unfortunately. Was Tyler, to your knowledge, was Tyler the only black child or black student in in the group that was together the, the night that he was murdered? No. He was not the only um, white um, African American child. However, um, he was a little different, you know. Um, Tyler had a date that night. Um, he had plans to be with his girlfriend. Um, those were not his friends that asked him to go to the University of Buffalo. Um, you don't know how they. I, I, I have no. I have no idea how. Even the police did, you know, mention, I don't know how Tyler was even saying hi to these kids because they were, they seemed to be cut from a different cloth than Tyler. So, um, but he was from the... In, in terms of, like, um, evidence, um, what what evidence have you been made aware of? Were, were there any messages or correspondence on Tyler's phone or social media um, that may have given... Um, a specific indication as to who could be behind his murder. And and do you have a vague idea? I obviously don't want you to name them for, for obvious reasons, mm -hmm. but do you have a specific name in mind that people have communicated to you that told you that this person is the one that did it? I, um, no, I don't, I can't really tell you at this point, no. Okay. So, in terms of the investigation, so you said that everything so far has been limited to the campus police, which again, when we're talking about a homicide is absolutely mind blowing that a campus, college campus police department would be tasked with, with, with such a, an in-depth and vigorous investigation. Yes. Um, are you in Erie County or what is the, the outer jurisdiction as to where this campus is located and have, you know, <laughs> Uh, the, the, the the state att attorney general. I feel as though that that obviously b bigger bigger parties in here need to be involved because clearly what's happening at the University of Buffalo at Amherst, the ball is very obviously being dropped here. Yes, it has. Um, it's disgusting. It's heartbreaking. You know, I I, I sent my child there, but I, you know we live in Long Island, Baldwin, Long Island. So who knew? You know. We need help. You know, it seems, you know, very political up there. No one's talking. Um, everyone's closed mouth. You know, it was very hard for us to find a lawyer that can even help us. And then it was going to cost a lot of money to, you know, get an investigator, get a lawyer in order to just dig through all of this. And hopefully we'll get some answers and arrest because this is not fair. Do you think that if if there was more media attention on this, that the the wheels of justice, as useless as I don't, as, whatever my opinion is of the wheels of justice when it comes to justice for black people in America, but the, the wheels of justice as a system as we know it, if, if, if there was more media scrutiny on this, do you think that you would be dealing with a, a different outcome rather than the stonewalling that you're receiving from both the police and, and, and the prosecutors? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the ADA, you know, they're taking us for a joke at this point. Not answering phone calls. Just, you know, you know doing whatever. 
you know, no answers. It's three months this weekend that um, my son has passed away and it's heartbreaking. Motala was my only son, he was the only grandson, and it's not fair. Tyler was a human being, you know, he strived for greatness, and um, how dare they? Comparing the way in which the murder of the students in Idaho was covered nationally, and even you said, I likely because of all the coverage, that might, may have been one of the reasons that the FBI decided to get involved. But there was a lot of law enforcement agencies working to solve that crime. And the disparities is, I mean, very clearly break down along race. And to me, not only Tyler's race, but the race of the alleged perpetrator. Um, and we see the ways in which wh whiteness is, 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 coddled, it's softened. Um, for example, up in Buffalo, where the Buffalo supermarket shooter tragically murdered 10 black black people just minding their business, you know, I didn't see a lot of coverage about the family. I didn't see a lot of coverage about the family in which this young man came from. I didn't hear a lot of questions about where are the fathers, you know what I mean? So yeah. c comparative, I mean, Tyler is a black child. This perpetrator is alleged to be white. What are the ways in which you feel as though race has played a way in which your son's case has not been covered, both locally and nationally? Where's the sketch? Someone saw something. I mean, at this day and age, we have um, cameras everywhere. There was no cameras, there's no witnesses, and you know, everybody's just shrugging their, you know, like, I'm, I'm sorry. No one saw anything on a college campus, but our college campus is safe. Sorry, Mrs. Lewis, we have no answers for you. You know, I didn't send Tyler to school for fun and it wasn't free. And, you know, and I'm left with nothing. No answers, no child, no son. I'm just so heart. I mean, it's 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 so heartbreaking, you know, especially with this young man, obviously taking a, a, a proactive approach to life and, and setting out to, to discover and blaze his own path. You mentioned that hiring a lawyer and hiring an investigator is going to be costly. Do you have funds or um, links that people can be made aware of that if they want to support you in raising those funds in order to get justice for Tyler that, that we can direct them to those places? Yes, is exactly what it is. Justice, the number four, Tyler Lewis. Um, that's his um, social media page. And um, justice for Tyler is his GoFundMe. And anything would be greatly appreciated. You know, it would go towards um, legal fees. his legal fees. Um, family legal fees. It's an uphill battle, you know. Um, it's absolutely disgusting how, you know, we're all grieving and now we're, we're pushed to figure out how we're going to get justice for uh, Tyler when this should not be. Not only should it not be, but the police either the University of Buffalo Police or the, the Amherst Police, whatever police jurisdiction is there, I'm sure there's overlapping police jurisdiction, but the entire state of New York should not be okay with the fact that there was a known killer out there. Someone murdered this young man. People know who did it. Even the police likely have an idea, but they are, I guess, capitulating and giving more rights to a, a, a would be defendant, even though nobody has been specifically charged. But it's like, it, it almost reminds me of the Supreme Court um, Justice Roger B. Taney that, you know, a black man has has no rights that, that a white man is bound to uphold or bound to acknowledge. The, the life of your son here is being disregarded in favor of the freedom of this alleged perpetrator whom is, is widely believed to be white. 
in the year 2023, Miss Lewis, I mean, how does that make you feel, especially about a, a phrase in a movement like like Black Lives Matter, like it, it means something, right? But when the police treat you and, and your son in this way, it's very obvious that to law enforcement, when there's a potentially a, a white perpetrator and a black victim, that black lives actually, in fact, do not matter. Mm, it's blatant. Yeah, it's, it's a slap in the face. Yeah, <sighs> Every day, the last three months, Every second, no phone calls. I've reached out, I've emailed, pleaded, cried, no answers, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, Miss Lewis, who can we email and call? Because I, I think it's time, you know, that that everybody else do what they can to get involved and turn up the heat on those that are supposed to be providing justice for your son. Can you tell us the name of the uh, assistant district attorney or or whomever is in charge of your son's case? Because I think we would like to give them calls and emails and, and, and try to find out what's going on here. John Flynn is the district attorney. Um, I've called him repeatedly. He has not returned to my phone call. John Flynn, and he is the district attorney. Is, is this Erie, Erie County? County? Yes, Erie County. The assistant district attorney is um, Gary Hackbush. Can you spell that? Gary, you said Hackbush? Yes. H-A-C-K-B-U-S-H. Yeah. Gary Hackbush. Okay. Assistant district attorney at yes. Erie County in New yes. York. Um, are there are there any police districts that we need to call? Is the University of Buffalo still handling your son's homicide investigation? Exactly. A homicide investigation. The university is handling it. And they refuse to move it. And they refuse to move it. I've called the FBI several times myself to ask. I've called the hotline a million times. So, you know, please just step in. This doesn't seem right. And they just brushed me off. They don't, they wouldn't even give me like a, a number, like even just like, you know, pacify me. Say, okay, you know, here's a, a number, a complaint number, and maybe. No, I'm sorry. This is an open investigation. It's what everyone is telling me. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I am dumbfounded at, at, at the arrogance, at the indifference, at the, the inconsideration um, in which you were being treated, Mrs. Lewis. And I'm sorry, and, and I'm assuming that's your mom um, with you there. And, and I'm so just deeply apologetic and so heartbroken that you have to experience this, not only the loss of Tyler, but, but the, 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 the abuse. I don't know how else to put this. This is abusive to you as a grieving mother, as a grieving family yeah. to, to put you off in this way. And it's so disrespectful. And I'm so sorry that you've had to experience this. Here she is. Now she wants to talk. Hi, good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you for being here. I'm yeah. so sorry that, you're, that you guys are dealing with this. Yes. Um, <sighs> Tyler was my only grandson and I'm deeply shattered about his death you know and he spent a lot of time with me uh, holidays uh, during the summer because I'm a special ed teacher and his mother worked year-round and we were very close and Tyler he was a kind and humble quiet and very sheltered young man because he was the only child. Um, he was, um, he loved his home, he loved his family and uh, he didn't need anything. But when he went away to school and um, I don't know, um, apparently there were um, 
students up there that preyed on uh, freshmen and sophomores that I learned, and I never knew this. And um, it's really heartbreaking that he would go to school and be acquainted with these type of individuals to befriend him and steal from him and lead him down the wrong path. It's awful. I have never heard of this before. And as my daughter said, uh, the DA hasn't, very, hasn't been very compassionate. Uh, I called him a couple of times and he called her to say to her, don't have your mother call me again. Now, I was um, a probation officer in Queens County and I worked in the DA's office and I have never heard of a DA having that type of attitude, really. And I worked there from uh, seven or eight years, but he was so inappropriate, um, not sympathetic to our needs. You know, it's one thing losing Tyler, uh, but then we have to fight for justice. It's it's just it's it's not a good feeling. It's not I, a good feeling. I can imagine and. And this is, to me, it's it's a harder fight than had Tyler been, number one, if Tyler had been killed by somebody else black, that person would already be in jail. So let's be clear about that. And I know you guys don't, don't disagree with that because that's just a fact. If Tyler had also been killed, let's say by police, it may have been a a gradual discovery of whom the officer was, but it would have been found out eventually. It just seems that there's so much protection for the person who actually killed Tyler, that this is a harder, harder road to hoe than, than if this were a cop or if this were an instance in which he was killed by somebody else black. Absolutely. And uh, after the first month, uh, the uh, detective was saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, we have some um, young men in my office, but they are uh, not talking. They have, a, they have lawyers. They're not talking. For three months, not talking. And then they went on to, uh, we're looking for DNA evidence. And from DNA, nothing. You know, DNA is supposed to be taken at the crime scene. But at this point, it seemed like a botched investigation. They are covering something. Um, you know, I'm just uh, really um, speechless about this. This is like a bad dream. I can imagine. And and when I became acquainted with with Tyler's case, you know, I thought about the young man in Western Pennsylvania, Peter Spencer, um, who was found murdered after going on a camping trip with some of his co-workers. No, no charges were filed in that case. And then uh, there was another case in Georgia. A uh, young lady, I think her name was Tamia Horsford, again, out with friends, a lot of them different race than she, and she ended up dead and no one was held accountable. Could you give the, the, the GoFundMe information again, um, ladies, please, so everybody who's watching Status Crew now and who will watch this later on um, can know where to direct their material support? And again, could you give us the names one more time of, okay. of the people in charge who we need to light up their phones and light up their email boxes and, and ask them what is the delay in getting justice in a, um, for Tyler Lewis? Okay, I have my son come on now. Can you turn it on? Hello, how are you doing today? I'm well, I'm well. Thank so you I'm for Tyler joining Zonko. us. My name is Ryan Trollinger. Hi, Ryan. Hi. What, what did you want to add? So um, really the need here, we need to get national attention for Tyler's case. As you had mentioned with several other cases here, they've all got national attention from the Idaho to the, the 
the young lady that died in Mexico at her friend's, um, you know, our friend's hands. We really need more attention, national attention, um, you know, MSNBC, CNBC. That's that's the differentiator here to put more police, more attention on Tyler's case. We need national attention on a DA to make sure that he's doing his job because right now it feels like it's being swept under the work, under the rug. And, you know, we can't let that happen. The, the more this case, you know, goes on is prolonged, um, the more the less less people are gonna pay attention to it. And we have to keep beating the drum. So you had asked about some information. We have uh if you go on Instagram and Tyler, uh Justice for the number four, Tyler Lewis. Um, you'll see there's a link tree there. Uh, I'd ask for everybody just to uh, follow uh, the Instagram, follow the, the Facebook, share. If you can contribute to the GoFundMe, it's on that link tree there. Um, uh, it, also, if you go to linktree.com, I believe it's, it's Justice, the number four, Tyler Lewis as well. So you can go there and, and, um, and, and access all of the social media and the GoFundMe. Okay. Well, Ryan, um, again, my condolences to, to you, to your mom, to, to Rakishia for, for the loss of your, of, of your loved one, of this young boy, this, this, this shining star. I mean, you could just see it on, on his face. This young man had a glow about him and it, it is, it is unacceptable that he's gone. It is absolutely unacceptable that no one has been arrested, named, and held accountable for taking him away from, from your family. So I want to thank all of you for making some time to share this. And I know this is hard. And, and, I, and I hate the fact that in order to get the word out, you, you, you all have to basically re-traumatize yourselves by telling the story again, because a lot of people just don't know. And I hate that, that, I hate that process for you. So you all have my deepest sympathies, my condolences and, and all of our compassion um, from everybody that's watching us here today. So thank you all so much for making some time. Thank you for um, having us on. We really appreciate you. Absolutely, you. absolutely. You guys, Justice, the number four, Tyler Lewis. Okay, you can put that in your Google searches. Um, go to the, the GoFundMes, to the link trees. It is important that we turn up the amplification on this young man's story. And I'm going to be sending some emails. Uh, the, it, it's closed business now in Erie County. It will not be closed business tomorrow morning. And people need to start answering their phones and seeing their email boxes get flooded with questions about why is there a killer, a known killer, to be on the loose Um while this young man is 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 no longer with his family. If you All get right. any uh, responses, would you please let us know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And and I'm I'm very certain that 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 Jordan will probably include this information um on, on this episode. So people who come back and watch this later, they'll be able to to find that information and have it easily accessible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.